So in this video, we're going to talk about the basic functionality of SALT SSH. How to set it up, how to communicate with a remote system using SALT SSH, and how to do some basic configuration and remote execution. SALT SSH is installable via your package installation system. In this case, we're using apt-git on an Ubuntu system. Similarly, SALT SSH can be installed on different operating systems. Some operating systems, the SALT SSH package will be deployed with the SALT master package. Others, they will have a dedicated SALT SSH package. Either method for installation is perfectly fine. SALT SSH is also available via Python's pip installation system. So pip install SALT SSH will also give you a working SALT SSH installation. Moving forward, before we try and communicate with the system, SALT SSH needs to know what systems are available to communicate with. This is defined inside of SALT rosters. Now we're going to take a look at the default roster configuration here. The roster system, like many, many systems inside of SALT, is pluggable. So there's more ways to define this, such as the ability to scan a network for SSH connections, or to use other systems' similar files to define exactly how you want to reach out to those systems. Now, in this example, we are defining a host which we are going to name to SALT SSH, Server 1. The host gives us either the IP address or a DNS resolvable host name for us to reach out to. And then the user specifies that we're going to be uh, attempting to log in using the root user. So, pretty straightforward there. Now, there's a number of other options that can be passed into the roster. And to name a few that are much more commonly seen, uh, there is password. Now, this is if we always want to log in using a password, and you feel that it is okay to save a password in plain text in the roster file. We're going to show how to use SALT in this demonstration uh, without having to store that SSH password. Sudo allows you to log in as a non-root user on the remote system and then tell SALT SSH if it should execute the command on the remote system using sudo or not, allowing you to still not have direct root logins to the remote system. MinionOps allows us to specify uh, any options or parameters that need to be sent to that specific system when it runs. And then timeout, of course, telling us how long to wait for the SSH connection to fail if the response never comes. And then finally, priv is a, a, an important concept. One of the things that we feel very important about in SaltStack is not only creating very secure software, but also encouraging secure behaviors. And so Assault itself is designed to be able to be used in such a way that human beings never need to be interacting with authentication keys. A very common, uh, of course, mechanism for security faults comes through social engineering or an individual's loss of their private SSH key. And so by default, SALT SSH will generate a local SSH RSA key to use for authentication so that you don't have to reapply your own key to the deployment process. But that priv option, which can be set globally or for individual remote target systems inside of the roster, does allow you to specify an alternative SSH private key. Now, the first thing we're going to do is a remote execution command. For those of you familiar with SALT, you'll see that it is virtually, it is not virtually, but exactly the same layout to execute the command as SALT, but in this case we're saying SALT SSH, followed by the target, in which in this case we say server1. We could just as easily put a star there to say all targets, which are specified in the roster, followed by the function that we want to execute, in this case a simple test.ping. 
Now, upon executing, though, we will get an error. Now, if you get this error, hopefully the output is clear as to what needs to be done. The host key needs to be accepted. Again, Salt SSH does not try to bypass any built-in security for SSH itself and does its best to be a responsible user of SSH for automation purposes. To auto-accept the key using Salt SSH, then you can simply run Salt SSH with a dash I. So as we run again, we will see that we got a little farther this time, and we have been prompted as to whether or not we want to deploy the SALT SSH key so that we don't need to reapply the password. So in this case, we're going to say no so that we can demonstrate the ask pass option to SALT SSH. If we put in an ask pass, then a password prompt will be given, at which point you can securely enter the password to use to authenticate against all target systems which are going to present a password prompt. So in this case, if you have n number of remote systems that we were trying to execute test ping on, and we knew that they all happened to have the same password for the user that we're going to hit, this is a very convenient way to only have to enter that password once for all of those servers. Now, we're going to control C out of that, and execute without the ask pass and go through the same prompt we did before but now say yes let's go ahead and deploy that key so that we won't be prompted for the password again so now you see that a password prompt comes up and since we have now deployed the, the SSH key we no longer need to send a password to the remote system and so we can execute a test.ping without issue, similarly a, a disk.usage or network.interfaces. All of the remote execution routines, which are available to SALT proper, are also subsequently available to SALT SSH. Let me talk about using SALT SSH to execute raw commands on remote systems. This is a very slick feature of SALT SSH. Instead of forcing it to run through SALT's uh, management components on the remote system, we can use SALT SSH to do a one-off command. Now this becomes very, very, very convenient when we want to execute one raw shell command across multiple servers. And so as you can see here, we were able to use salt ssh r to run if config across multiple servers and get that raw output and the information relative to that raw output displayed easily in the terminal. One of the questions that comes up with respect to agentless management of remote systems has to do with the footprint left by the manager. So, whenever a system is managed, the manager itself, of course, needs to do things, needs to perform actions on that system. And so software needs to be on the system to perform those actions. Now, how SALT normally works is that we run a SALT SSH command on a remote system, and SALT SSH will leave a copy of the SALT minion software in the temp directory. This makes it easier for SALT SSH and makes it more efficient for SALT SSH to rerun commands over and over again because it doesn't have to redeploy itself. SALT SSH also has very powerful tools so that it knows if it needs to upgrade that cached copy or if that cached copy is corrupt, which makes it very, very easy to maintain high speed and highly performant deployment. But let's say that we want to execute and leave no trace. Leave nothing behind. The way to do this is to execute SALT SSH with the capital W or 
wipe option. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that will help you get up and running with Salt SSH quickly and easily.